will be Big Mick Nolan. And Don's got the go for the knockout. Face him, Don. Face him. Look him in the eye and face him. Welcome to the grand final of 1975. Nolan comes in there. Scott gets up on him. Clears Burns up north. He's grabbed high. Oh, and look at this. A 15-metre penalty against Calvin Matthews. A kick from Burns going right up into the goal square. Moncrief back in back and back. I thought it was fairly good because it was about 67 and a half yards, which is a fair way. Oh, he let everyone know too. <laughs> he had a big mouth too. He'd let you know, come right up to your face. So you had to let them know that you're up and about. Uh, they might have think they could have stood over with their toughness and their culture. And there we see a shot by Martella. Not a good one, but it's a move. And it's oh, Rowling's got the ball. Count Miss Rollins, he's got those bright yellow shoes on. respect for each other. It was almost a, like the Mexican standoff. Scott and uh, Kegovic having a great battle there. Style, he's tipped out. And a free kick. Whoa. Kegovic. Well, there's big Don Scott. You wouldn't think he was a fashion designer. It certainly wasn't fashionable. It was a kick by Sam. Each and every one of us were very mindful that whoever starts it is going to end up on the wrong side of the ledger. There's a go now for Blight, a pass. That's OK, and Burns has got the mark. He's playing on, he fires. I played on Croswell and gave me an absolute bath. Came back, Tiger's on fire and all this sort of stuff. Knocked away again by Hendry. Going through as uh, Croswell playing the game of his life down there. Brent Croswell, he was just on fire. Going after Scott, he's got a chance, but he's up there to get a free kick, I'd say. Oh, unbelievable. The kick by Scott. Taking his time, realising the importance of each kick for goal today. Oh, oh it's it. Got in by the skin of its teeth, but it's a goal. Riders up north going for a bit of a run, but he's running into the pocket. He straightens up now, he kicks it through, I reckon. It's through. By way. Grabbed, oh, he's tipped up the ball, but he gets the kick back. Oh, oh, oh. Well, was really on, on song. He stood out. He was a, had a great loop. I thought his effort was very good for Hawthorne. Nolan tries a short one over here towards Schimmelbush. He's under the hammer. He's well met there by Lee Matthews. Oh, hell, give us a go. Bloody crowd yelling, he's jumping a mile. Glad it was uh, Schimmelbush and not me in any case. Martello comes in now. He's surrounded as the siren goes, ending the first quarter of the 1975 Grand Final. The scoreboard at quarter time reads Hawthorne 2 2 14, North Melbourne 4 2 26. They should have been further in front. They had all the play. They had more style to their play and direction, where we tend to just get it and bomb it in. And I think it was just the fact that we're under pressure from North. We've got to do better. A lot better. They've dogged it here, in front of me here. After all I've said, blokes not willing to put their bodies in. You've got to have a go. If you don't have a go, you're coming off the ground. I'll finish with 15 men, but we'll have blokes who are having a go. They're beating us in the air, they're killing us. So knock it towards the goals, you got it clear. They got the score on the board, we're down. It's a disgraceful quarter, and it's no good going on like that. Two marvellous coaches, Louis, aren't they? Brass and Kanga. Well, two of the biggest personalities that we've ever had in football. Boys, all in all, it's pretty good. We've got more possessions than them. We deserve our lead, which is nearly double their bloody score. And I want another two-goal lead for this bloody quarter. Fellas, that's one good quarter, only three to go. Don't forget a blitz, a blitz bloody creek from this first 15 minutes of this quarter. You ready to go again? Like that, come on! It's all right for Brightus. He's given a hand pass back to Shimmerbush, a snap for goal. Adam Beauty. Jump out then, Cook. But it's called play on. In comes Martello, crashes his way through, kicks across the face of goals. They're after it there. Trot manoeuvres his way around. He steadies, he shoots, and he's put it through. Stewie Trot. Uh, there's some pretty tense faces, Luke. I don't know whether the hypnotist has got to them. Yes, we use this chap to put people under hypnosis. As I count backwards from 20, you begin to awaken. When I reach one and snap my fingers, you come wide awake and you feel really well, completely energized. 
Guy Grant's always been a fitness nut, so it follows Grant's got an affinity with sportsmen. He used to lay us down on the floor and sort of put us to sleep to shit. And, just... and I remember being with Barry Cable, laying back, and we had to be quiet, and I whispered to Barry, I said, do you think this does any good? And he said, not if you can't play footy. He said, <laughs> he said hypnotism. <laughs> Look, don't worry, fellas, just just do it, and I'll come out at quarter time and turn you all and point you the other way, and then you can go from there. <laughs> and I was a bit of a sceptic. I said, what's this, you know, hypnosis? I said, I don't think that works. Do you think your work with North Melbourne is going to make them a better side? Yes. He went through this process and put me to sleep, and I said, I don't think I'm going to work. I might be one of those one percenters that, you know, are really a thorn in the backside of your particular mode of employ. Three, two, one. Anyhow, he woke me up halfway through and I had a needle right through my arm. I went through there and out the other side. The needle, and I hadn't felt a thing. So then I was convinced. Thank you, and I might go to this hypnotist that North's been using, Louis. The way Kikovic swooped on that ball will give a clear indication that he's right on the ball, slamming Sammy. To me, I was always interested in looking at anything it was new, see if it was possible to be used or how good it was going to be. Maybe if Ron Barassi decides that hypnotherapy isn't the answer to a coach's prayers, we might find one word added to this sign. Hypnotists are not allowed to be taken into the ground. It's swinging around, it could drop short, it does. Up they go, Wade takes it! Wade took it from behind and he's popped it through! The Wade's first goal! I was tempted to go for the mark. And I thought, no, I've got to stay down. And it just came straight into my hands and I ended an open goal and kicked the goal. Here we see now, going after Sam Kikovic. He quite can't make up his mind what to do. Over to Wade again, the back is blind. Has to go for Wade, he fires. Another goal to North Melbourne. It was just fantastic. He'd say, yeah, I've done it again. <laughs> Rollins, a little rover, taking a run on that southern side of the ground. Eventually gets his kick in towards the goal square. Oh, a tablet! Couldn't see him missing this one. It's on its way. Rollins oh, hit the post. Oh, look at it. Burns under pressure. A left foot snap by Burns. He's popped it through. Bloody hell, that was too good for us there, weren't they? Hawthorne. Some of their players nonplussed. In nonplussed. Good expression, yes, yes. Well, he did look a bit nonplussed. Towards Burns. Burns runs around, he straightens up, he shoots. It's another one. Lou, they've got three goals in three and a half minutes, North. He screws it around to the face of goals. Martello. Kicking to the Western goal, it's on its way. There's another one to Hawthorne. They're still in business, believe me. It's the run on. Well, he's put uh, Greg under pressure now. Trot intercepts it. Intercepts the ball. Fires for the goal, but he's off target. And I think he's put it out of bounds on the full. Yes, out of bounds on the full. And the siren goes for half time. I didn't think it had gone for us, but we were really in a lot of trouble. The Hawthorne coach, John Kennedy, not looking particularly happy. There was always silence in the dressing room. He made sure everyone had eye contact with him. You don't look around when John's delivering messages. There's only one thing in football, that's to get in and fight for the ball. Fight for the ball! We're so far into the mess that we have to be desperate to get out of it. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong. At least you're doing what I ask, and at least I'm responsible. But I'm not responsible for the gutless, witless display that's going on out there. And at least do something! Do! Don't think, Mick! Don't hope! Do! At least you can come off and say, I did this! Or I shivered it, or I played on. At least I did something for the sake of the side. Do! Act! Don't think, act! Eye on the ball! I'm game enough to tell you to do it. Are you game enough to back me up? <sighs> Started giving me a bit goosey again. The hairs on the back are going up and. I still feel like a race out of the room now. North Melbourne yet to appear. No doubt Ron Barassi has had a lot to say to his team.
When you get in at halftime, you would imagine what Brassy was like. He was very, very focused. Why the bloody hell should we panic? We're better than this bloody mob! There's only one way bloody grand finals are won. By the sort of stuff you've been showing up to now. Now, 60 minutes away from history, bloody Kennedy will be going berserk. They'll come out and they'll bloody throw everything at us. They want us to keep on depositing goals. Just like we bloody need to, we want to, and we can! Now, come on! It's a long kick by Sam Kigovic. It's a beautiful kick. Eyes are going out for North. There's Blight going to the goals. He fires. And a goal. Oh, that's a dangerous one, it burns. It's a short kick, up goes Barry Davis, and he'll be paid the mark. 15 metre penalty against Hutt. One of my problems with Hawthorne was that they were holding up the game. Is there another one? Yes, another 15 metre. Uh, Kevin Smith was the umpire, and I said to Kevin, I said, Kev, uh, I've got one thing for you. I said, if I'm held, if I'm held by a player, I'll get an arm free and I'll have to hit that player. He said, Barry, I'll deal with it. I know what you're talking about. And I thought, mm, we've got a really good chance of winning this game. But there's that Brand Teller game. What a game he's playing. The press had gone out and bought the Rantels and Wade and Barry Davis and all those sort of guys to buy a flag. Three of the outstanding players of the competition of its time. Any player who played 10 years with another side could automatically go to anywhere, anywhere they wanted. Responsible for North's new bid to win is Alan Aylett, a former North Melbourne star player, now club president. The cold hard facts are that you, your committee, Ron Barassi, have decided on a plan, and anybody who doesn't fall into that plan has no place in this club. Yes. People say we bought players, we well, did. And you can't win premierships without players. They said to me, would you sign? And I went up to have a meeting and determined that I wasn't going to go because uh, I'd wanted to stay at Geelong. You know, I played football for nothing for uh, for 12 years, probably. Literally nothing. I had my match payments that, I, that every player in the league gets. It starts around about $30 a week. Ron Joseph, from the from a bag, took out a, uh, a tightly knit brown paper parcel. He cut the string, and when something's really tight and you cut the string, it just sort of slid right in front of me across. And there was $20 notes, like, like, you know, like I'd never seen before. And he said, there's $20,000 there. He said, if you sign now, I said, he said, it's yours. Take it home with you. And I said, where do I sign? So I took the money, and I had it in my glove box in my car for about a week, uh, a big Ford Fairline car. <laughs> They seized on that 10-year rule. It was a, a, a club triumph, really.